Okay, good early Saturday morning to you all. Um, yeah, some of you are probably still asleep. Some of you are, may not be awake to see this, but when you do, um, well, I want to say good morning. And uh, it is 6.30, 6.30 in the morning. Um, and so, first off, how are you doing with life? I want to ask you that. Uh, a lot of us are, maybe we're wrestling a little bit with what's happening, what's going on in the world. Seems like there's a new problem every time we wake up. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I, was, I heard a news report saying that there was over 100 fires burning in 11 West Western states of the United States. 11 Western states, over 100 wildfires. That's unprecedented. I have never in my entire life heard of something that steep. It seems like also it's not just fires, but we got hurricanes. We had, uh, I think, uh, Louisiana got bombarded, I think, with Lauren. And now Sally. And by the way, there's, I think, five more named storms in the Atlantic. Talk about unprecedented. We've got... We've got, we've got a lot happening in our world. Not just that, but politically speaking. We've got Russia and China ramping up their military. We've got Iran and Turkey... As a matter of fact, I actually read a news story saying that Turkey is actually wanting to form a military alliance with Russia. We've got all this stuff going on in the world. We've got cultural issues. We've got, you know, of course, the transgender movement and the homosexual lifestyle running rampant through the states. And not just here, but in other countries as well. So it just seems like the world, in and of itself, is running out of control. And, well, now you're thinking, hey, that's very pessimistic of you to start out. Well, now you know how the prophet Habakkuk felt. Because that's what I want to talk to. I want to give you an overview of the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk is three chapters long. Um... But Habakkuk felt the same way. Let me give you the background of what was happening during, during Habakkuk's day. Okay. There were two kingdoms. Okay. The Israelites were first made of 12 tribes. And there were one kingdom. Unfortunately, they split. Ten kingdoms went to the north. Two kingdoms remained to the south. The kingdom in the north fell in 612 B.C. Now, at, at that same time, 612 B.C., Habakkuk became a prophet. And Habakkuk was in the southern kingdom of Judah. And Judah was just out of control. Like, literally. Everything, there was just no boundaries. There was no law, there was no order. Everything was just out of control. Like, there was no... No reverence, no fear to God, no sense of justice. It was chaos. And Habakkuk was seeing that. I want to read to you um, in Habak beginning Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. And this is how it reads. Um, first, and this is verse 1, the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. Okay, and this is verses 2 through 4. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. This is what he was seeing. <laughs> the kingdom of Judah had basically a 
gone the way of apostasy and they had wandered far, far away from God and they continued to wander far from God. And Habakkuk's like, look at all that's happening. Are you going to continue to let this happen? And this is how God responds. God's response is this. Uh, verse 5, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your, in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetu impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own. They are feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like a vulture, swooping to devour. They all come bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They deride kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. They build earthen ramps and capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on. Guilty men whose own strength is their God. That is God's response to Habakkuk. Habakkuk saying, hello, is there is no justice? And God saying, no, 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 no. There will be justice. Because... He's going to use the Babylonians. Now, who? Now, what's Babylon? Okay, um, do you remember, uh, if you guys know your Bible, or if you knew your Bible, you would know that there is a king of Babylon by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. Ring a bell? Uh, because that is a... Because you, it should ring a bell, because that is the same King Nebuchadnezzar mentioned in the book of Daniel. Okay? So... At the time, Babylon has now become the new world power. It was once Assyria. There was a power struggle, by the way, because Assyria was on the decline in 612 BC. Actually, 612, okay, let me back. 612, 612 BC was, the, was uh, when Nineveh fell. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. And what happened? Babylon came in and conquered that city. Babylon was a rampant city. They were trying to, uh, they were expanding and they were growing more powerful. And this was during Habakkuk's day. And the Lord's saying, hey, look, I'm going to use this city, this city called Babylon. I'm going to use this kingdom. But Habakkuk, I'm not going to read the verse for verse, but verses 12, uh, chapter 1, verses 12 through 17, and then chapter 2, verse 1, Habakkuk basically says, uh, God... You're using a wicked nation to bring justice to your people. How can you do that? And then the Lord basically responds in chapter 2, verse 2. He says, Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald might run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. God goes on to tell Hab the prophet Habakkuk, Look, I'm going to bring justice to Babylon. In other words, he is going to use Babylon as a means of punishment to the people of Judah that have rejected him. And then he's going... After he's done using Babylon to punish his people, he's going to punish Babylon for their pride, for their extortion, for their idolatry. Um, they've also, and not just this, but uh, verse 15, he calls them out by saying, Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wineskin till they are drunk, so that he can gaze upon their naked bodies. Basic, and then God go. Goes on to say in verse 16, You will be filled with shame instead of glory. Now it is your turn. Drink and be exposed. The cup from the Lord's right hand is coming around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. God tells Habakkuk, I am going to punish Babylon for their sins just as much as I'm going to punish the people of Judah for their sins. 
God is not, uh, doesn't show favoritism. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9, the latter part of that verse says, Since you know that their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. In other words, God doesn't put people aside and say, Oh, I'm not going to do anything to them. They're my favorite. No. God is just. As a matter of fact, Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk 1.13, um, the Bible tells us here, and this is Habakkuk talking, he says, your eyes are too pure to look upon evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. And then he goes on to ask, why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Habakkuk was right in the first part of the verse, but then he goes on to say, why do you tolerate them? Why do you allow them to, to succeed? They're, they don't have a sense of justice. And then God's like, I'm in control. I'm in control. Matter of fact, in verse 20 of chapter 2 ooh, of, of Habakkuk, the, it says, But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. In other words, the earth's going to recognize the Lord. And what does Habakkuk respond? He responds with a prayer and praise of faith. In chapter 3, verses 1 through 19, he goes on to praise the Lord for his greatness, his power, his splendor. But why do I tell you all that? Habakkuk, you may have that same attitude Habakkuk did. Seeing all the injustice in the world, seeing all that's happening, uh, and you're wondering, well, why doesn't God do anything about it? Rest assured, God has a plan. God has a plan. Well, that's one thing you need to recognize. Another thing to recognize is, look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk was distressed by, you know, the, the injustice. What was happening was he was focusing on the problem. Rather than on God. By chapter 3, he begins to understand, hey, wait a minute. It's not I who call the shots. I'm not the one in control. God's in control. And maybe that's you. Maybe there's a situation in your life where, you're fo where you have a bad situation. Let me tell you something. I am not in a very comfortable spot in my life right now. I'm not in a very comfortable spot. I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not necessarily happy with where I am. But I will tell you this. I'm, I'm more at peace about the situation. You know why? Because I know who's in control, not me. I'm not the one in control. God is. And I think it's all about our focus. I was just reading in my devotional this morning. Um, I was reading in Acts, Acts chapter 3, verses 2 through 8. Um, um, basically, um, I'm going to summarize what I read. It basically shows that Pete, the apostle Peter and John were going up to the temple, and there was a beggar looking at them. And then Peter says this to, to the to the beggar, he says, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And then what does it say? Then Peter help, uh, helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk and give praise to God. That was verses 7 through 8. Um... But the point, what did he say? Um, but the point, the point of the devotional was, to, was this. Um, sometimes, because uh, what Peter says, look at us. In other words, look this way. Sometimes, it, it caught, sometimes our focus can get foggy. We tend to focus on how can I control this? When we really need to be asking, okay, remember who's in control. That's what our response needs to be. Remember who's in control. And yes, it's hard. It's not easy. It is not easy in the slightest. But as a follower of Christ, we ought to have that mindset. We, that our desire should be to focus on the one who's in control. And you know what? I, I get a, I, another thing I get from Habakkuk. Just reading it, I was studying a lot it a lot last night. Um, it's 
it shows a couple things. Number one, there's a relationship between God and Habakkuk. Habakkuk dialogues with God saying, God, what's going on here? Why haven't you done this? And God's like, hang on, I got this. And then Habakkuk complains again, why are you using the Babylonians to bring justice? They're not, they, they are not righteous either. And then God's like, I'm going to bring justice to them too. In other words, I got this. He's telling Habakkuk, I got this. There's a relationship there. And it also shows one thing. God is showing patience with Habakkuk. Because you know what? Habakkuk was human just like us. We can get impatient with God. Sometimes we'll even lash out at God. Sometimes we'll even say, God, why haven't you done this in my life? Why is this still unchanged? Maybe for some of you, you've been looking for that dream job. But you, you're stuck with a job that you don't like. And, and, and you're like, like, God, why am I still here? Or maybe there's somebody you're, you're praying and they, you want them to get saved, but they show no signs. And, God, and they're, you're like, God, why haven't you done anything in their lives to change their minds? Or maybe for some of you, you're, you're looking for that girl. Or girls, you're looking for that dream guy. You're looking for the one to spend the rest of your life with. And you ask, why haven't I found her yet? For the guys. And for the girls, you're like, well, why haven't I found him yet? Point is, everything happens when God says it should happen. And God was telling Habakkuk, I, basically, I got this. I'm going to take care of this. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. This is a great verse to remember. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. That is Habakkuk's response. In other words, he says, okay, though this doesn't look good, that doesn't look good. For, and this is talking about the nation of Israel. He's saying, though this doesn't look good for us, I'm going to be hopeful. I'm going to trust God's promises. We, we, here's the thing. I, I heard somebody sing this in a song. I don't know what you're doing but I know who you are. It's all about taking God at his word, which begs the question, do you take God at his word? Do you say, do you say, yes, Lord, I believe your word when you say this? Because I'll be honest with you, there, there have been times in my life, and even sometimes even now, that I question and I wonder, Will you? But we have to take God at his word. We have to trust that God will do what he says he will do. And that he is in control. And that whatever happens in Romans 8, 28, it says, as, and we know that, for, that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For the believer all things work together for your good. And that means good or bad. Good or bad situations will work for your good and for God's glory. I think we forget that. So remember to focus on God. Even when the circumstances tell you otherwise. Even when you're surrounded by people you probably don't like. Or people that you don't understand of people that you are having a very hard time with you got to trust God's in control and that there's a plan God has a plan do you, okay let me ask you this did you really think that God was just going to lead you into a hard time and just leave you there no if you're a follower of Christ the purpose is to get you the trial's purpose is to get you to focus on him. To grow you spiritually. To help you move forward. And, and that's something that we don't get. Some, we want instant relief. 
when in reality God is trying to grow something in us. There's spiritual growth behind whatever this is. I, I can't name it. Only you can. You can... Because there's a, there's a situation in your life that is just too much. And that's where we need to learn to trust God. To look to God and say, yes, Lord, I believe your word. I believe that you're going to take care of me and that whatever happens, I'm going to be fine. Because you you're watching over me. I like, uh, I, I'm reminded of Psalm 34, 15. The Lord, or the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. And in Psalms 1, and in Psalms chapter 1, the final verse of Psalms, it says, The Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And who are the righteous? Those that follow and know and have a relationship with Christ. My question is, like Habakkuk could talk to God, can you do that? Or have you done that? Well, I don't know if God would want to talk with me. Well, now's as good a time as any. I talk to God about everything. Let me tell you something. I talked with God about something very uncomfortable this past week. I was very mad at him. But God met me where I was. He really did. How? Well, he met me through the book of Jeremiah. I was reading Jeremiah 15 and I could re and I read a passage twice, three times in a row, and I could really sense God calming me down saying, "I got this. I know your pain. I'm here. It's okay. I'm going to help you." Knowing God is a blessing. Because guess what? You get to tell about how good this God is to other people. Having a relationship is part of, is part of be, being successful in life. Having a relationship with God. That's actually the best, the most successful life you can have. To know God and to make him known. So, number one, have you talked to God lately? Number, that would be question number one. And if you haven't, why not now? You can talk to God right now. Doesn't have to be formal. I'll be honest. There are times whenever I pray, I I walk around. I I, I treat. I like to I like to walk walk around and talk with God and explain my problems. And I don't care whether I'm in private or public. I can be out on the streets. I don't care where I am. I'm going to talk about my issues. I don't care. Or who says as otherwise. I mean, look, I'm a broken individual, and I am not ashamed of that. I am not ashamed of having problems. You know why? Because my, my, my confidence doesn't come from how good I look. My confidence comes in who I know. Is that where you get your confidence? That's another question. Do you get your confidence from God, or do you get it from something else? If you get it from something else, that's dangerous. Because when your help comes from the Lord, when your confidence comes from God, then let me ask you this. What man or what woman can stand, can stand and say, oh, well, oh, how can you say that? Like, what can they say? Look, if they say something, then what's that going to do anyway? Nothing. You're going to be fine. God will take care of you. Trust him. Lean on him. Talk to him. And get and pour out your heart to him. I did that this week. And God met me. Will you meet with God? Will you be willing to? Anyway, I just wanted to pose that to you, but there's a lot I could go into with the book of Habakkuk. I hope you, uh, I encourage you to go read it for yourself. Great book. 
very, I mean, just wow. What a, what a powerful couple lessons we can learn from this prophet who, uh, and, and I hope that you all have a good day. And by the way, if you have any further questions or you want to talk more on this subject, feel free to drop a comment below. Um, and yes, I hope you have a good day and God bless you.